Welcome back to Hogtown Homestead. Like and subscribe if you feel so led. On today's video, we are going to give you an update on our fence line. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get walking. So this right here is the top of our property. And as you can see, right here, we have a corner joint on our fence. We've actually done a lot of work on the fence line. So <clears throat> this is gonna be a gate. So from here to there, about there. Kate, go out there where I'm pointing. That's about 12 feet. And there's gonna be another H brace. And this right here is an H brace. It's gonna be an H brace there. There's gonna be a gate, a livestock gate there. And then we're gonna connect this woven wire fence all the way, Cade. Run to that corner over there. So we're gonna run woven wire fence to there and that will shore up this portion of the fence. Now let's walk you around, starting with where Cade is, walk you around to where we are. This fence is called Fixed Knot Stay Tough Woven Wire Fence. Stay Tough? Yep. Even though it's really bendy, it is. Well, it is bulky. it's not meant to be rigid meant to stop animals from getting through. All right, let's walk down this fence line here and show the viewers what we got going on. These are eight foot, five to six inch in diameter treated posts. Now, in order to get these into the ground, we used an auger driven by the tractor and we drove a hole between 33 and 36 inches into the ground. And then we dropped a post in there and then we took all the dirt and tamped it back down around the post. If it wasn't stable, then we would just use concrete. That's correct, good job, Kate. After we had both vertical posts in the ground, we then came through and attached the horizontal post and then drilled a hole on this side and drove these spikes through to connect the pieces together. Once that was done, we took this wire here. This is heavy gauge wire. I don't remember what gauge it is. Wrapped it around a couple of times and then just started twisting it and twisting it and twisting it, as you can see here. And that caused tension to go from there all the way to the bottom of the other post. And that made sure, that makes it so that this thing doesn't move at all i can't move it at all and it also tightens up the joint on this h brace so we're going to keep going so now we are walking to our wet weather creek bottom down here and this part got really tricky if i had it to do over again and you better not tell terry thompson this we would have stopped right here where this brace is and just continued that way we didn't do that we cleared our way through here and this fence goes over this creek. Now, in order to secure that so that animals don't get through there, uh, we are going to hang a cable from that post to the base of that tree. And that cable, we're gonna put a whole bunch of used tires on that cable and that'll close off this area so that animals can't get through. As you can see, we have a lot of trash down here. Why is there so many You'll animals? no doubt remember that I have said in many videos, clean up after yourself. We have no idea what's in this water, so we don't, I don't know. We wanna take a look at it. We'll probably have to get it tested because- There's we got a these, bunch of barrels. Yeah, we got these old barrels. We got, uh, see this fall tight so it doesn't fall in that is the neck of a fuel tank and then there's another fuel tank there so clean up after yourself i believe the people who own this property last before we got a hold of it just littered for littering's sake it's really disgusting and this is our side of the property all right this section of fence again we only have like 200 feet that we need to stand up because this fence is solid um, and it's standing up straight and it's it's great. So we're gonna leave that alone. To give you an idea of what Caitlin and I had to do here. <laughs> First we had to find the fence <laughs> and then we had to cut this down. So here is the destruction that we wrought on this place. I need to come down here at some point and clear up some of this. Oh, look at this, I got a gun. Oh, nice, you can keep that. 
Like that would be good firewood. This other stuff, I'm just gonna let decompose. I was gonna try to make biochar, but that's too much work. Plus, this makes really good rabbit habitat. And so during, during rabbit season, we can come out here and shoot some rabbits and eat them. We didn't take that tree down because it wasn't interfering with the fence line. Actually, <laughs> we didn't take it down because I think, or the tree actually grew around the fence. So it's just a living fence post. Man, that thing is big. It's electric fence post. There's another electrical fence post, but it's missing the plastic insulator. I'm just gonna use a torch and heat it up at the bend and bend it back into shape. It's mild steel, so I might not even need to do that. That was all interfering with the fence line, all this stuff. So we had to cut it all down and make way for repairs to the fence. Whoa! Whoa. I just immediately dodged it right as I landed. Like a ninja? Mm -hmm. Nice, dude. And again, this section of fence is actually pretty straight, pretty solid. We don't need to do much work here. I should probably uh, make sure that this is pushed down to the ground because we do have a problem with dogs coming in here. So when we, when we get livestock, we are going to get livestock guardian dogs. We are about three quarters of the way through our perimeter our creek bottom just found another one of these nearly hey, buried if you guys know what this is let me know in the comments section down below i just touched it so i don't think it's poison ivy also i'm immune to poison ivy which is actually a thing this is a problematic section here because i don't know if you can tell this is a hole and it has been eroding on this side of the property line or of the fence line there's the bottom of the fence, there's the hole. So at this section, I'm probably gonna try to move the fence this way to get to the top of this hole and then go that way. And I'll probably fill that up with gravel, wood chips, and something else, fill dirt. I don't know, I have to figure that out. If you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments down below. This is where our fence gets a little more problematic. This stuff, Caitlin and I had cut back and as you can see, it's growing back with a vengeance. Daddy. That's all the stuff we cut out. We get to here, and once again, this fence is actually not in bad shape. I need to come through with my chainsaw and clip that log. And this fence is actually buried in the ground. So it's probably suffered quite a bit of corrosion. Just found another tick on me. Because that bottom of the fence is in the ground, we need to come through and wow. exhume that so that we can uh, reuse it. And again, you couldn't, you couldn't walk through here until Caitlin and I came through and cut all this. We'll have to come through and trim this. This grass, that's that stuff with the really cool seed heads I was showing you deeper in the woods. Man, I don't know what kind of grass this is. That comes up to my, the bottom of my chest. It seems really tender. So if you know what this is, let me know. Very interesting grass. All right, so now we're almost to the end of our creek bottom fence line. There's another electrical fence, electric fence post. That's awesome, we need those. This may not look very good, but to me, I think it's good enough. And we're gonna try to make it serviceable once again. Ooh, when we were pulling stuff out of here, that pile of sheet metal out of here, that pile of sheet metal was right here where Kate is standing. And as we pulled it up, we found a nest of newts. It was pretty cool. And over here, you know what I think this is? 
I think this is the spine from our pigs. That's exactly what that is because it's cut in half. That's the spine from our pigs. It's already yep. a solid 10 minutes. So that's been there for who knows how long. I mean, we, we butchered the pigs in February and that's some of their remains right there. In these areas, I'm gonna remove and replace these T-posts because they're bent. This is all the tangles and brambles and stuff that we pull out of here. And here we are at the corner of our property. The bottom corner of our property. So that existing fence line right there, we're just gonna pull off of that wood there and wrap around this corner post. And once we get that project done, we'll be able to put livestock in this fence. And that'll be excellent. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode here on Hogtown Homestead. That's right. Actually, we're going to add a word to that. We're going to say like, share, and subscribe if you feel so led. Hey. I was looking at the analytics on our YouTube channel for the last couple of days, and we have 131 new viewers. The processing chickens video that I posted with Justin from Six Days Farm and Kyle and his kids, that has garnered 117 views. Of those views, 87 people are not subscribed. So if you feel like subscribing, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, leave us a like. If you have any comments or have any questions that you would like us to answer, we'll go ahead and answer those. Just leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.